good evening good dear friends a very warm welcome to you all as we bring our second session on clicking tricks understanding camera functions and lenses i am dr archana tandon a gynecologist with a passion for photography we have with us dr ds hanspal who's dig healthcare good evening from agartala and he too is an enthusiast photographer hey good evening Hanspal, everyone thank can, you dr Achua. we cannot see you i think your camera is off and we have uh, mr arvind patode who is i can see uh, all into wildlife photography and he is into nature conservation and creates videos to raise awareness good evening he is a teacher and tomorrow is teachers day and we are honored to have two teachers with us mr arvind and mrs renita who too is an teacher and she is uh, she loves doodling and uh, sketching she is a published author and she loves to take clicks with her dslr and her mobile thank you ma'am welcome dr ranjita welcome dr arvind and welcome dr hanspal good evening so, good evening good evening uh, we spend such a lot of money on our cameras and our lenses and if we do not understand their functions and do not work on them then the money is all wasted so we have to understand the te the technical capabilities we possess to control the camera rather than camera controlling us by its auto mode and we also lack the confidence in our skills and knowledge if we do not know the functions we need to become competent by understanding the capabilities of the uh, that are intrinsic to the instrument and learn to use them we should develop confidence and select the right lenses to match our vision for our shots to develop our vision awareness skills we need to understand the different views we can have of a scene by using different lenses and to understand all these i would now, now invite dr ds hanspal to explain to us the camera functions over to you dr hanspal uh, thank you dr archana i'll be discussing the functions of the camera today uh, for reference i've taken uh, entry level dslr camera that is the nikon d5600 this is the top view of the camera on top we have a video start stop button which when pressed can start the video this is a, a button which has a red dot on top which is uh, identifiable and easy to locate the power switch uh, button turns on and off the camera it uh, in the con camera it encircles the shutter release uh, button however in different cameras it could be placed somewhere else the shutter release button when you press it uh, you take a picture uh, it is almost located uh, at the same place in all dslr cameras then we have the exposure compensation aperture uh, button Uh, most of the uh, DSLR entry level uh, cameras have a single command mode which adjusts the shutter speed when in manual mode when uh, for uh, setting the aperture we have to press the exposure compensation button uh, when not in manual mode this button when pressed uh, can let you adjust the exposure compensation to make the uh, image brighter or darker 
this is the mode dial which has the uh, various shooting modes i'll uh, discuss it later the live view uh, switch it uh, locks the mirror in the dslr and uh, blocking the optical view finder hence the image can be seen on the lcd screen so basically it is uh, not much used for still photography but for video uh, shooting uh the command dial adjust the aperture uh, uh, the shutter speed uh, when in manual mode to adjust the aperture known as one has to press down uh, as to press down on the exposure compensation button this uh, command dial also navigates the menu and uh, helps uh, to control the other functions like iso and uh, white balance and I'll, I'll be coming to the various uh, shooting modes uh, the first one is the auto shooting mode in which uh, the camera controls everything the shutter speed the aperture the iso as well as the flash setting you just have to point and shoot uh, it is mainly used by the beginners or uh, people who don't know what settings to choose or to shoot shoot quickly the second mode is the program mode which is uh, almost the same mode as the auto mode in which the camera controls the shutter speed as well as the aperture however uh, one can control the iso the white balance uh, the flash setting and the exp exposure compensation then we have the aperture mode aperture priority mode which is denoted by the uh, uh, letter a aperture uh, the priority mode one can set the aperture whereas the camera takes care of the shutter speed at, uh, based on the other settings wider the aperture more light will enter the camera and you'll get a brighter picture and uh, shallow depth of field narrower the aperture you'll get li uh, less light into the camera i'll uh, get a darker picture and uh, how uh, you'll get a wide depth of field <laughs> the next is the shutter uh, priority mode Uh, which is denoted by the letter s this uh, uh, in this one can uh, set the shutter speed uh, will enter the camera and uh, you'll get a darker picture and uh, there'll be no blurring uh, slower the shutter speed more light is uh, likely to enter the camera as the shutter will remain uh, long, uh, uh, open for a long time and you will get a brighter picture and uh, the there will be uh, uh, some blur uh, sorry i mean there will be uh, there will be some blur then we come to the manual mode which is basically uh, uh, controls the uh, both the functions of the camera like means that uh, the uh, both the controls of aperture and the shutter speed are under your control then we have some uh, scene modes uh, which are basically uh, preset uh, shooting modes which are uh, designed so that you can have uh, good pictures of portraits uh, some uh, very close details of insects like in the macro mode and some land landscapes uh, wherein the a picture is uh, kept narrow so that uh, the whole view is clear and the uh, sports or action mode in which the the shutter speed is uh, kept very fast so that the action is frozen uh, in sports or any other activity now i come to the side view of the camera the side view of the camera Uh, has a flash button in the, the advanced shooting modes uh, this is the side view of the camera uh, you have a flash button on top uh, in advanced shooting modes like uh, the auto mode or program mode or the aperture priority and other modes uh, pressing this button will trigger the pop up flash we can see a uh, symbol of flash and uh, compensation uh, uh, exposure compensation besides this button uh, pressing this button will help adjust the flash exposure compensation to make it brighter or darker 
the function button will, the, is uh, very helpful for so uh, programming uh, of uh, function of the this the menu and assign it to this button so that you can directly operate that uh, function from this button the lens uh, release button is also on the side of the camera pressing this button will unlock the lens mount and one can rotate the lens and uh, detach it however you don't have to press the lens to mount a lens down below you have a drive mode button which controls the various uh, driving uh, sh uh, shooting modes drive shooting modes uh, where you can take a single shot or uh, shoot continuously or even uh, use the countdown timer the icons on this uh, um, the high uh, continuous shooting and the timer are universal and uh, they can be located easily on any other camera also now I come to the back view of the camera you have the menu button on top uh, which brings uh, the menu whereby you can uh, control uh, the image uh, quality uh, the auto focus settings and various other settings how when you are in manual mode uh, the, uh, some of the menu options may not be available uh, we come to the info uh, button which when uh, while uh, shooting when this is pressed it gives uh, a lot of uh, information displays uh, during playback this button can uh, show you the metadata the histogram or uh, some pertinent information about a image the focus exposure button lock is the next one uh, during auto focus and auto exposure uh, pressing this button will lock the settings uh, even if the camera is moved here and there the image player uh, button as you know is going to review the images uh, and the videos on the lcd screen then you have the eye button this uh, pressing this button will display a set of functions on the lcd where which you can control like the iso the white balance <laughs> and the uh, drive mode uh, drive mode then you have a magnify button wherein uh, pressing this will magnify the images on the lcd and you can uh, see the greater details of the image uh, the delete button uh, is there to delete any photograph from the memory card you have to uh, press the button twice to delete the photo or press another button like okay to uh, again to uh, confirm your decision the last button is the demagnify button just the opposite of magnify button however uh, it also allows you to uh, expand the uh, view on the lcd and uh, show you uh, image thumbnails uh, the icon uh, beside this button is uh, the question mark it is basically this button is a, uh, also a support button which helps to uh, get tips on any uh, menu function which you want so with this i come to the end of the function of the uh, camera i hope it will be helpful for, uh, helpful for the beginners mainly however uh, there is a operating manual which is uh, you get with the camera which is very helpful so you can uh, <coughs> take advantage of that and refer that thank you thank you dr hanspal for the detailed description of uh, in a, and that will definitely help us in understanding the functions of the camera. And uh, now coming to understanding the lenses. Before we uh, uh, talk about the lenses, let us understand what uh, the visual field for human vision is. So if I stra stand straight and look straight in front of me, and I spread both my arms like this, I can see both my arms. So human vision is actually between 180 to 200 degree. But if I close one eye and look, then the open eye cannot look at my other arm and vice versa. But if I bring that hand a bit in front, then 
the closed eye can look at it so the actual vision visual angle is 180 degree uh, but the angle which both the eyes can see that is dual eye visibility is 130 degree but if we notice then uh, towards the periphery we cannot see everything clearly and the focal uh, focus uh, the point which is in focus which is uh, uh, which can be seen by both the eyes that angle is just 50 degree so out of 130 degree 30 degree uh, 60 degree 50 60 degree for human eyes uh, focused correctly and this is very important when we understand lenses for the number written on the lenses like you must have seen 50 60 80 200 300 15 18 18 all these numbers in millimeters denote the degree uh, of uh, the visual field which is in focus as compared to the human eye so though the human eye sees just 50 degree rest of the thing is not clear but if you take a lens of more than 50 degree it will capture a bigger field and it will have everything in vision clearly and this will be explained by dr arvind in uh, as from here on so over to you dr arvind thank for you. describing the lenses and their types thank you good evening friends your lens is the most important thing which you purchase when you buy a camera because the lens is going to give you your end results so whenever you purchase a lens you should see that you purchase the best lens available which you can which your budget can afford you know to if you buy any lens which is not of high quality and you have a good camera body then that lens is the images you are not going to get very good images the images quality depends on the lens even if you have got a low end camera body and a high quality lens your images will be superior so that is why important thing is the lens and as we have we already known that the lens have some numbers on it that is the focal length some mentioned on it in mm so there there are different types of lenses and uh, some lenses are called termed as wide angle lenses some are extreme wide angle lenses some are normal lenses some are medium telephoto some are telephoto and some are uh, super telephoto lenses so all these lenses have got a specific use that's why we should know what we want to use the lens for and what the lens can give us so if we see here in this list we have got as a normal standard lens we have got the first for images of we talk about as a normal lenses what we see normally what our eye sees normally that is what your camera is going to capture okay yes so this is what when we see Yes, we will go to the same image. In the wide-angle lens, something which we, which ma'am has just now told you, is something which is your peripheral image is there, but actually the cone, the zone where your eyes are focusing, is only fifty-five degrees. But the, when you want to have a peripheral wide-angle image, we use a wide-angle lens. And telephoto lenses are something which will be taking you closer to the subject, which will be magnifying the subject. So telephoto lenses are used. when you want to magnify certain objects which are very far off so now here we can see what is the normal view of the previous slide please ma'am previous slide ha ah, this is what is the normal angle of human vision which is which is known as a peripheral vision we have and when you look at it through a 55 mm or 50 mm angle uh, 55 50 mm lens fixed on a camera that this vision is cut down and it is the cone of visual attention which is seen in that so in the next slide which we see there's a small bracket which has got a small bracket inside that is what the 55 mm 50 mm lens will be looking at and the whole image which you see edge to edge 
is the peripheral image which is seen by the normal eye but the cone of visual attention is only in the center that is 55 to 60 degrees yes next one so these are the normal lenses which we have the standard lens they call it the standard lenses a 50 50 mm lens anything between 45 50 55 is a normal lens we call it these lenses create an image which is uh, when you look through the viewfinder also it will create a natural image so these are widely used and they do not distort like a telephoto lens or do not you know uh, distort like a wide angle lens and do not compress like a telephoto lens these lenses have got very good f numbers that is a wide aperture numbers and can be used in low light conditions so normal lens is a very good kit lens for using in low light conditions and for normal photography you can use it next one so this we have already seen with the uh, our peripheral image and the normal and the cone of attention that is what is shown over here again the angle of the human vision and what a 50 mm lens will focus on then we have got is something known as a wide angle lens wide angle lens as the name suggests these lenses are great for landscapes for interiors for architecture photography uh, but you must be careful because they create a sort of distortion and the closer you are to the subject the more distorted the image will be so you have to be careful when you use that short focal lens these are means the wide angle lenses can be used in low light conditions because they take a wider view and because of the wide uh, focal lens there is less chance of you getting a camera shake next one so here again we have we can see what the normal eye would have seen was the white bracket we have a rectangle bracket there is what was the normal 50 degrees 55 degrees is the cone of attention and with a wide angle lens that is 35 mm lens or 24 mm lens if you use you'll get this light blue frame so that much of the image is captured with a normal lens 50 50 mm lens you would have got the image captured would have been in the white bracket but here if you see the light blue is the image you will get when you use a wide angle lens so they take in a wider picture of the scene what you want to capture here again two images shown over here what a wide angle lens is capable of you see you can get a wider image of the scenes so that is why they are very useful for scenes or in confined places or in interiors or for architectural photography next one telephoto lens telephoto lens is i think what it will be magnifying it's a big lens a heavy lens and these lenses narrow the field of view so apparent you are as if you have gone closer to the subject it, apparently it is like that the view which you get the image it is great for wildlife that's why where you don't want to risk yourself you get very good wildlife images you can get very good sports images of uh, motorcycle races car races any sports event football cricket by sitting at the distant away from the subject so telephoto lenses give you a very good close ups they magnify the image they are also good for portraits because they isolate the background from the subject which you are photographing so telephoto lenses also compress the images and this can be to the positive or the the and it can be it can also be a disadvantage for the photographer so telephoto lenses have longer focal length they require better light conditions and some you get telephoto lenses which are pretty fast means they can be used in low light conditions but they are very expensive so these lenses are special lenses for wildlife or for sports photography next please yes so here we have you are seeing two images one is a 55 mm normal lens which is there you will get this image which is a wide image of the cityscape a lighted cityscape in the night scene and when you use a when you switch over to 200 mm you get a closer view of the building distant buildings but one thing you must remember when you use a telephoto lens there is a chance of camera shake you know when you click there's a chance of the camera shaking so you should take care that 
the shutter speed which you set is the reciprocal of the focal length of the lens which you are using so suppose i am using a 200 mm lens over here i should see that my for a handheld photograph i should use the shutter speed of anything above 1 upon 250 or 1 upon 500 but in when this condition is like this when you are taking a night scene where the light condition is poor low lighting is there then to take these images on a telephoto lens you should keep it on a very sturdy surface use a wall you can use a tripod or you can use yourself you can hold your cameras against your stomach and hold it still and click when you are breathe out you should every time click when you breathe out so your body is for that moment it is very stable when you breathe out if you hold your breath your body is not stable but when you leave your breath for that fraction of a second before you inhale your body is very stable and you can take uh, images very good images handled with a telephoto lens yes sir the next slide man here also we can see the differences what the image you can capture using various lenses here the we have used is a 1855 lens 55 300 mm lens on the right side we have shown so at 55 mm you can see the image on the top it is a wider image but when i use the full zoom of that zoom lens i get a very narrow view narrow image i get and that is why uh, we use zoom lenses more easily because they are very versatile you don't have to carry different lenses whereas in telephoto lenses this prime lenses it is a fixed focal length but in zoom you have got variable focal lengths so one lens does the work of a lot of lenses next one then there is a something known as a bigger than wide lens that is a super wide lens we call it so these will be far you know they'll take in a bigger Im image you know the bigger view which you have it will be captured but like i told you in wide angle lenses and super wide or fish eye lens when we come to talk about it also there is a chance of distortion so you must see that your subject is not very close to the camera the subject should be a little distance away so that this distortion is avoided It's next one and this is the fish eye lens fish eye lenses have got extreme wide angles they have angles of about 180 degrees at times and so as you can see in this image the buildings the skyscrapers are curved so this is what is the distortion you will get when you use anything any wide angle, angle lens which is lesser than 24 mm so you have to only take care of this distortions and use this lens creatively over here it is intentionally done to show the dramatic effect of the sky and the city with a bird flying over there macro photography is also one of the field which is far catching up very fast and it like requires a macro lens a macro lens is something which is from 50 mm to up to 200 mm you get these lenses and they are pretty good they are pretty fast lenses also and you can focus and get the image one to one ratio that is if the insect is about 5 say, uh, say about 5 mm you will get the same magnification on the sensor or the film which you are using so macro lenses will give you anything between one to one or greater also it can magnify the image also of the subject which you are clicking so it's very good for taking images of small insects micro things of your uh, you can have like uh, micro uh, small uh, uh, micro processor chips are there industrial photography you can do all these you can do with a macro lens and get very good results only this thing in macro lenses the, the shallow depth of field is there so you have to be very careful of focusing what you want yes ma'am thank you ranjita you can take me thank you thank you yes uh, good evening sir uh, this is the photo i uh, shot in my garden this is of a jumpy spider uh, the aperture set at 5.6 uh, the shutter speed is around 125 and the iso is 200 yes so here also we see this is a I'm macro photo like this is a macro photo like yes uh, sir kind of focusing still, that is why focusing. i 
So in macro photography, focusing is very important. Here we can see that she has particularly focused on the spider's eyes, and that is what it is. Whenever you take any image of any living thing, you should see that the eyes are sharp. That is the first and most important thing. That the eyes should be sharp. Then rest, if everything is out of focus, it is fine. But the eyes should be sharp. So this is a very good image. The exposure also looks good because the greens are very rich and lively greens are there. Green is a color which is very difficult to photograph otherwise. And here the exposure being good, you're getting good green saturation is there. Thank you, thank you, sir. So thank you. the next we move over to the next slide clicked by Ranjita. And I would ask Dr. Uh, Ranjita to give the particulars and uh, Mr. Arvind to comment on the photograph. Yeah, this is one of my favorite uh, portraits. This is of uh, my subject uh, is Rani. She's a rag picker. Here, the aperture is set at 4.5. Shutter speed again is at 200. She was very still. And the ISO is 900. I was confident with the ISO 900 because this is like a really hot summer day afternoon. Yes. Here in portraiture also, like we discussed earlier also, the in our image, in our photograph, eyes are very important. The eyes are sharp over here. And here in portraiture, eye contact with the camera, with the person who's photographing is very much required to give the best results. So here we can see the image has been captured. The mood of the lady also is being shown. And most importantly, the subject is isolated from the background because the background is not sharp, it is blurred. That is, we have got a very good bouquet on the background. So the image is standing out and the light being uh, from the right side, a little top, that is the studio light we call it. This is actually taken in sunlight. The sun was very good and the position of the sun was good. The light was falling diagonally on the subject and creating that triangle on the below of the right eye. So that is what we look at when we take photographs of people and especially in portraiture, we see the lighting has to be perfect for that. And the expressions are also caught there because there's a contact between the subject and the photographer. That communication should be there to get a very good image. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arvind and Thank Ranjita. You. Thank you, Ranjita, for these lovely photographs. And so what, you, you, what did we... You're welcome. So what did we learn today? We built confidence in our technical knowledge by understanding common camera functions. We understood what millimeter on, of, on the lenses mean as compared to the human eye vision. And this technical knowledge will definitely help us in our creative skills. The vocabulary learned will definitely help us in uh, communicating with other photographers while we discuss our photographs. So uh, before I go to the next session, I would like the viewers uh, of this video to post in the comment which camera they are using, which lens they are using, and also if they upgrade uh, they want an upgrade in their camera and lenses, then what that would be with the reasons so that we can pick on it in the next session. And the next session will be on light and exposure, how the human eye works, how the camera captures and records light, what is exposure, and understanding how the exposure affects our photography. And now it's time to say goodbye, for it is dinner time. And we would uh, I, Dr. Arsina Tandon, with my co-panelists, Dr. Hanspal, Mr. Arvind, and Renjita, would like to take your leave with a quote eat the dinner with the family to stay together. And here is the dinner table laid for you. Thank you and Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you.